Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. In this episode, I'm going to make a constexpr-based maze generator that generates a random maze. So in the last episode, I left off with our constexpr random number generator that uses the time underscore uh, macro here to create a different seed value every time the program is compiled. And then I have a random number generator. Now, the first thing that I needed to solve with this particular code was I needed to have a constexpr enabled two-dimensional array. And I really didn't want to deal with a C-style two-dimensional array. I thought I'd make a little wrapper around it. And that actually turned out to be not terribly difficult. So for our two-dimensional constexpr array, I ended up with code like this, which is just a simple template that has a number of rows, a number of columns, and an operator paren that takes the column and row that you want to access and gives you back the const or non-const reference to that data. And then I have my data, which is an array that lives on the stack. Now, I strongly suggest that you go back and watch two episodes ago where I discuss stack elision, which, as I say in that episode, is something a term that I just made up. But the point is that the compiler, in a way, doesn't really care how much data you say is on the stack. It's going to do whatever it can with it to optimize it in interesting ways. And particularly in the context of constexpr, we just need a place to put some data. So I have this two-dimensional array, and I can use this. Now, in this particular video, just for the record, I am not going to go over every single detail of this code and bore you with it. But we've got the two-dimensional array, and now I encountered the problem that most of the maze-generating algorithms are stack-based. So what you do is you start at a particular location in the maze, and then you make random decisions as to which cell you're going to go to next. And each time you go through to another cell that has not been previously visited, you bust down a wall between the two cells, and you keep going on your random tracing of the map until you reach a point where you can no longer go any further. And then you backtrack until you find a branching point that you can continue from. And from there, you do more random wall busting down until by following this, you have visited every single cell of the maze. So I needed a stack. So I thought, how am I going to implement a stack in constexpr land? And it turned out that that was not that difficult either, as long as I knew the maximum size that the stack could be. And in particular, for the sake of my purposes here, I am containing things that are default constructible and trivially destructible. Now, in the context of constexpr, objects have to be trivially destructible anyhow, so that's not a problem. So I simply create an array of my t-type that the stack contains that is of the max size. Now, any time I add something to the back, I just reassign the value that is there, and I increment my position indicator. And any time I pop something from the back, I decrement my position indicator, and I return the last value that was there. So everything works here. And I have some simple helpers, such as empty and size, that help me traverse the stack a little bit more easily. All I needed to do now was implement the maze building algorithm. And now you might be asking, how do I know what the maximum size of the stack is? And that's actually pretty easy to determine. In the perfect case, were the maze to become a single path that traverses every single element of the map, then at most my stack is the size of the number of cells in the map. So I just make my stack the size of the map. Then I implement the algorithm, which is one of the most common ones that I got from Wikipedia. So this is the final result of the code that I ended up with. I have a random number distribution function, which again, I got help from Ben Dean on. And then I have some cell data structures that are, as I mentioned before, default constructible and trivially destructible and my uh, two-dimensional array, types of walls that might exist in the maze, and my stack object. And so I randomly generate the maze using this algorithm that goes through and visits every cell. And then I render the maze by using this algorithm that expands it by times 2 plus 1 so that I can actually build out the walls. And I have to make two passes over the maze to do this. One 
to fill in the vertical and horizontal walls, and then I make a second pass to fill in all of the intersection walls, the four ways, right T, up T, left T, etc. And I'm doing all of this with just a basic enum class. And then I set the size of the maze that I wanted to create, and I, with const expert here, make the maze, and then render the maze, and I could make this into one, um, one statement. And then I loop over the rows and columns, and this becomes simply a lookup to just output what has been generated at compile time. So if we look at the compile time code, all we have is basically a nested for loop that iterates over all of the elements in the rendered maze, and then just prints them out. And I'm using Unicode characters here, so I end up with basically just 100 instructions of actual maze code. And the rest of it is this giant data table that's been generated for me at compile time. And I can even take it one step further by adding a solver algorithm that is also constexper and basically uses the same algorithm that our maze generator did to traverse the maze and then mark each space as having been visited or taken. So I in my maze solver, each time I visit a spot in the maze, I mark it as visited. And then when I am done, I pop all of the history from how I traversed the maze, and I mark each wall, uh, each space as being actually utilized, not just visited. And I can then print different characters. So if it's been visited, I have a dot. If it's been used, I have an asterisk. And now I have a compile time maze generator with maze solver. It's all done at constexper. And now switching to my console and compiling this on the command line, I can compile it and execute it. This should be cross-platform, should work with any C++14 compliant compiler. And we can see in this random generated maze the path that it took to solve it. And in this particular case, it only made one misstep right here. And we can compile again and execute again and see that we'll actually get a different maze generated. But every time I execute the same binary, I'm going to get the same output since it was all generated at compile time. And it was interesting to note during the development of this project that if you are to undersize your, say, stack, that you actually now get a compile time warning error actually so here i have my stack for my history when generating the maze uh, that is the number of columns times the number of rows if i were to have just said actually i only want a stack of size three and then i compile it can be actually that was very strange i should have gotten a compile time error from g plus plus And we see here that we get this cannot call member function on pointer past the end of object. So Kling was able to detect at compile time, although with a rather difficult to understand error, that we have gone past the end of our data. So it can make things interesting when trying to debug constexper. So you might actually need to implement some code where you call this stuff in a non-constexper context, jump into it with your debugger, then go back to the constexper context to figure out where your algorithm went awry. Be sure to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and check out any of the links below.